And welcome to Hero Power. This is episode 81. 81. And I am your host, Avantis. And as always, I am joined by my co hosts, Zoroshio. Good afternoon, people. How's everybody doing today? And Versika. What's up? Let's get this show on the road. We got a <laughs> mage deck to play. That's right. I know. I'm a, I'm actually really excited about this deck uh, this week. I've I've played it a couple of games. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Zeroshio shot up the ladder with it. And we'll talk about that here in a few minutes. But it's oh yeah, it's a lot of fun to play, guys. So. All right, uh, before we jump into the news, uh, we got a couple emails to get to. And before that, Forsika, tell us a little bit about Force. All right, I actually had this pulled up, and then I opened up our show notes, and Microsoft Edge and all its glory took me from my page that I had pulled up and gave me show notes. Um, but no, so I, I started looking at the vector, and I, I wanted to compare it against models. You know, uh, Technology is always changing, and Vyforce does a really good job of staying on top of the changing technology and making sure that you get the most value for your dollar. So I went out, and occasionally I will price shop all of their computers. I'll start at the, at the bottom and work my way up. So I compared it to the next closest model, the vector to the next closest model, and the next closest model that I could find that matches up with the vector machine, which comes in at $600, is a Dell machine that um, came in at 749, which was featuring a 3.8 gigahertz quad core processor and a uh, GT, um, a GTX Force uh, 750, I think. Uh, I had it pulled up and it's gone now. But so with the vector coming in with a quad core processor and and running the, um, oh, dang it. I'm hitting one of those times. You guys, I have to apologize. I'll have to apologize, or you'll have to bear with me. I'm getting over a cold. It's kicking my butt. Um, coming in with the, the um, GTX 1050, it's um, already a graphics card upgrade, but you're also getting the 4.2 gigahertz quad core processor versus the 3.8, and you're paying $150 extra on the Dell, and you're getting less of a machine and that's the closest thing that i found online to the vector uh at that price point and I'll, I'll continue to do this with the other machines but one other thing that i noticed and when i was shopping this is important at least it, it is to me as the guy who always buys the added warranty because i like to protect my technology um the machine that i was looking at the dell didn't come with a warranty standard you had to purchase it extra Vyforce offers six months, um, it's like a limited warranty for six months after you purchase the machine. So if anything breaks on your computer in the first six months, you can send your uh, machine back to Vyforce, they'll fix it for free, and they'll even pay the shipping to do it. And that's that's a huge deal. And it's something I think is overlooked quite often. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, when we go from the audio to the video portion, because I, I wanted to bring up the next closest uh, machine that you're going to get that kind of customer support on. And we'll talk about that later. All right. So that brings us to uh, our first email of the week is from Jake. And he says, I would love to get into Fireside Gatherings. I live in Greensboro, North Carolina. Only there are none nearby. What should I do? Also, is Blizz working on more Fireside locations? I really miss the camaraderie like when I played Magic the Gathering and we could meet people at the local card shop. Well, Jake, um, so to kind of address this, Blizz doesn't really work directly on fireside locations. Those are handled by volunteer players known as innkeepers. Um, if there are none nearby... What should you do? Um, I would honestly recommend maybe becoming an innkeeper. Uh, <clears throat> it's something I've done since uh, July of 2014. And basically, it's it's not really all that hard. You just have to put a couple hours in uh, organizing the event. 
And I have written an article on our website a while back. I will link to it in the show notes that has kind of a walkthrough on how to organize a fireside gathering. But basically, you just go to firesidegatherings.com and click create an event, fill out the details, and that's it. You're, you're ready to go at that point. You know, you're, you're going to want to start um, advertising your event either on Facebook or uh, on an, a third-party website like um, Liquid Hearth is a good one. A lot of people check the calendar at Liquid Hearth to look for upcoming events. And, um, yeah, just, just get out there and schedule it on your own and be that guy that gets the, the Hearthstone community up and going in your area and kind of, you know, help bring people together for that camaraderie like you talked about. And uh, it's it's not hard, and it's a lot of fun to do. So, yeah. Right. Then, and another thing is, if you have some local game shops, just kind of go by there and see if anybody plays Hearthstone. You might be able to get a little assistance in getting the word out. If you can get a location like a gaming store to do your fireside gatherings, um, they will advertise to their patrons for you, as well as you know making a Facebook group and getting uh, getting an organization started. Um, I know in North, uh, I know in, in Chattanooga there was a Chattanooga Facebook group, but there really wasn't a lot of activity. And now we're just now starting to get some buzz in the Chattanooga area to to do more fireside gatherings. And and one of our local stores down here, Epicos, uh, helped us sponsor one of our uh, Tavern Hero qualifiers, and we're getting the ball rolling that way. So it just takes a little bit of effort uh, and time. And if that's something you want to do and put put that effort into it. You can build that community, and, and that would uh, allow you to see how it's ran and 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 make that the way you want it, and maybe the way you envision those those Friday night Magic the Gathering groups at, at the gaming store. So, yeah. All right. Uh, our next email is a follow up from uh, Mastrina from last week. It says. Just wanted to drop you guys a line and say thanks for the explanation on my question last week. Um, it says, it led to great discussion during our meeting and we uh, had a great time. I enjoyed last, show, last week's show except for one thing. Your resident shaman expert had virtually no interaction with your pro during the play portion. I enjoy when you guys have guests on the show, but not at the expense of interaction with the guest and each other. I would rather you guys just not have any guests if that's the case. I know they are pros, but we tune in to listen to the three of you. Just dropping some constructive criticism. Peace, Mestrina. So I'm going to turn this over to Versika, and I'm going to let him kind of answer this question. Well, um, thank you for, for emailing back in, and I'm glad that it led to... Uh, to great discussion. So I'm, I'm going to answer this in, in two parts. First and foremost, uh, the reason that I was so quiet last week was I've been dealing with um, like a sinus cold that kind of moved into my chest. So come showtime last week, it was actually all I could do to make the show. I was actually worried my voice wasn't going to last through the audio portion. So by the time we got to the play portion, I was pretty much spent. So I decided to mute the mic and save you guys from the coughing and hacking that came afterwards. Um, so that being said, I, I do want to also point out that um, you're not going to find a group of guys that love Hearthstone more than us. I mean, we really do love this game and the community is very important to us. And, and one of our um, driving reasons besides really you know just our love of the game but the reason that we put so much effort into the show is to provide you guys with a place where you can hopefully learn to better play the game and when we have the opportunity to have someone on who has qualified for a major tournament or who has done well in a major tournament somebody that is obviously on that next level of play um we tend to let them drive the deck and, and almost instruct us as well because we want you to see that line of thinking. 
We want you to see how they're anticipating. We want you to see what they're thinking of. And you only have so long before that rope starts to burn. So in order to give them the time they need to properly explain their train of thought and kind of drag us along with them, um, you, you almost need to kind of step to the side for just a minute and, and let them do their thing. And you know, take advantage of getting that window into the way they think. Um, so I, I probably would have interacted a little bit more than I did last week if I hadn't been sick. But at the same time, it wouldn't have been much more because Quarity, uh, he has qualified for the playoffs. He does play at a very high level. And he's a very cerebral uh, thinker and a very cerebral player. And we would have wanted to give him enough opportunity to be able to explain his thought process uh, before making his plays. And that's a service that we're hoping that you guys will value as you increase your level of play in Hearthstone. Um, so we appreciate that you guys love to tune in and listen to us. And I mean, that makes us feel good and it validates what we're doing as a podcast. Um, but I hope that when we do have the opportunity to have a pro on the show, that you guys take that opportunity to learn from a different perspective because we provide you with three perspectives. That's, that's what the show is built around. The three of us have a very different way of approaching Hearthstone. And we think that that, that makes a great show when we have the opportunity to bring in that fourth dimension and, and that player that is just on that next level, you know, take advantage of that fourth point of view and, and learn from them and use it to help improve your game. We promise that the next week we'll be back to our normal witty banner and Southern draw. Um, so, <laughs> you know, and, and I, ho I, I hope that there. is a, 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 for lack of a word, I hope that is an eloquent enough explanation for you that you understand that it, it's not us being pushed out by our guest. It is us being courteous to our des our guest and allowing them the platform that they need to show their skill. Yeah, and I want to kind of touch base on on that a little bit in further detail. When we have those pro players on, like uh, like Quirty, and we've had Do Seven Five Nine Seven, Bloody Face, Joster, of that caliber of player. When we're doing our play portion, they they think on such a level that it's hard to get that in and and verbally acknowledge what you're thinking each turn before the rope burns out. So they're talking about what they have, what they want to do based on what their opponent wants to do, based on the next two or three turns, uh, their end game goal, and and for them to verbalize that. If we try to talk over them and give and try to dig a little deeper each play, we won't get those plays in. And more importantly, in just seeing how to play the deck, it's it's really refreshing to see, see and hear their th train of thought each turn. And I love that aspect of it. Now, I do appreciate that you like the three of us and, and us kind of talking through the turns and, and giving our uh, professional insight on at our level. Uh, but I think if we stopped having those pros on to give that kind of insight uh we we'd be remiss in that aspect of the show uh but we will we definitely will move forward and take that into heart uh try to rotate our pros a little bit in, in a different fashion so that you definitely get time with the three of us uh, i do want to address a question in chat asking about what the question was last week the question uh that mastrino brought in was that uh the discussion on aggro and how you, we could change the meta to to make uh, aggro better. That was well. That and whether Versika was single. Um, those are the two questions that they brought. <laughs> forward, uh, as, as just as a refresher. Yeah. But thanks thanks again, uh, Mastrino. Uh, Mastrina, I I really hope that you're you're after your Hearthstone group that your your club that you're in thrives and that we you know give you some information and uh, topics to discuss every week. Yep, and I want to, uh, you, you named almost all the pros that we've had on the show, but you can't forget the 2017 winner champ, Dr. Jikaninki. Oh, well, Dr. Jikaninki is definitely on a, on a different level as well. And, and again, I, I'm remiss to not mention his name. I just rattle off something <laughs> that I thought off the top of my head. Dr. Jikaninki is, uh, is definitely uh, a good friend of the show. He's uh, in the THL tearing it up. Uh, 
we're, we're glad to have that caliber of player on our show yeah. when we can. And, uh, chat says the three of us make one solid pro. We're, sure. we're, we're like Voltron. <laughs> yeah. Voltron. I am oh. not the legs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, we've got a good show this week. Uh, we've got a few topics to talk about. First off, um, yesterday, the uh, Hearthstone blog dropped a bomb that there are some new changes coming to Hearthstone. Yeah. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm really excited about the features that were announced. Um, first up, Friends Forever. And basically, last year, if you guys remember, for about a week or two, I guess it was two weeks, they yeah. did what they called the Friendly Feud which allowed players to complete quests while playing against a friend. Uh -huh. Well, based on all the positive feedback Blizzard got about that event, they have decided that it might be a good idea to bring that back. But they're going to actually take it a step further, and it's going to be available going forward from now on. Permanent fixture. Uh, this is awesome. I love that we can now play test decks while completing quests with friends. This just makes, I think, the world a better place overall. Rasika, what are your thoughts? I like it. I think that this is a... I think this is a needed feature for casual players. People that may be... I don't know. They, like the ranked ladder is not a place for everybody, and casual play a lot of times is full of people just trying to get quests done, and you don't always get to play the decks you want to play because the quests are win quests, and maybe the deck that you want to play is something a little bit different, or maybe you're busy play testing for a tournament coming up, and the ladder isn't exactly where you need to be. The ability to complete the daily quest with a friend allows you to do it allows you the versatility to either be in practice mode or if you know the the casual play is is so full of people playing decks to complete their quest and not damaging their ladder rank then it can be a very hard place to to pilot decks that either you're trying out or you just want to log in hearthstone and have fun that day and those people need a to have a place to this allows them that pocket of protection that they need to get in there and be able to um, to play and and have a good time and still complete their quest if the other two modes aren't really working for them on that day. So I, I think it's a great thing, and it, it, I mean, get, can it be abused? Yes, it absolutely can, but. Um, I think the the benefits greatly outweigh the the negatives that are going to come with it. Okay, cool. Zeroshio, thoughts? Uh, I'm really liking this. Uh, for clarity, it won't be every single quest. There are some quests that don't revolve around playing playing the game. Uh, it's you spectate your friends or challenge a friend. Uh, which yeah, I guess that can be done. Or as well. yeah, I think you're mean challenging the, the innkeeper. You know, challenge the innkeeper. There, there are some quests that can't be done uh, because they don't fall in the range of winning a game or playing cards or anything like that. Uh, but all the rest of those uh, they they've said are going to be able to be done uh, with the player friend option with the challenger friend. Um, I know that there are ways to abuse this, but to be honest, the way they've implemented a lot of the other quests that you can play with your friends, where if you concede, they that basically you can't, you don't get credit for for the quest. Um, this makes you put in the time, even if you have to play a friend, you have to play the game completely out. So I, I think they've taken away the the biggest part of uh, of that abuse factor. Uh, where you could just queue up, concede, queue up, concede, quest is over. Uh, fortunately, that's not an option, especially with a lot of these other quests that are play so many Murlocs, play so many Divine Spirits, weapons, so forth and so on. 
Um, I think this is a, a needed change, a good change, and will bring in more of a casual atmosphere and allow the ladder to be the ladder. Yeah. Um, the other change that's coming uh, in the future is called sharing is caring. And basically, oh, yeah. this is going to allow you to um, easily copy and share deck lists with uh, they're basically implementing deck importing, which up to this point has only been available through third-party apps like Hearthstone Deck Tracker. Uh -huh. So basically how it'll work is you'll build a deck and then when you're ready, there's a copy button that will copy down a text file basically. And you can then give that to a friend. They can copy uh, the text file along with a code at the the bottom and then they go in say create a new deck drop in that that uh code and it imports the deck list for you so i'm excited about this because now i'll be able to include the codes in our show notes to make it easier for you guys if you want to try the decks that we play on the show every week you oh, can yeah. just grab that code import it and there you go you know, so uh, it's it's going to make it easier for you guys, from us, our perspective, instead of having to sit there and stare at our website while you copy down card for card. I I think this is a great feature that that was much needed. Um, I know other games have similar features already built in, and it's good to see Hearthstone kind of kind of catching up to the to that. So, you guys have anything you want to add about uh, deck yeah. reporting? Uh, the one good thing about this is if you export your deck, it'll give you the code that you can give to friends or put on on your Hearthstone site or whatever you want to do. When you import that, um, it's going to be like the deck recipes. If you're missing any cards, it will put them in the deck, but it'll make them gray, and it'll give you suggestions to, to replace those cards. So that's really neat. I, I was worried that if you didn't have all the cards, you couldn't import the deck at all. You can at least import the partial portion of the deck and then decide at that point if you want to craft those cards or if you want to go ahead and, uh, you know, find a substitute for, for the cards, which is really neat. I'm, I'm excited for this. I, I'm curious. They didn't go into much detail how it will work on mobile devices, uh, especially devices like iDevices, like iPhones and iPads. But I'm sure that they're going to be they're going to have some form of importing uh, that'll work with that. Because their 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 big focus is making sure the mobile experience is very similar to the desktop experience. Yep. When I'm in hardcore building mode, I build decks and tear them down all the time. So I love this feature for the simple fact that I'm going to be able to call back decks and not try and have to remember what I put in them if I didn't write them down. So now instead of using a whole page of a notebook to write decks and notes down, I can write the code and write the notes and now I can probably get two or three decks on a page and be able to call that deck back up with cuts. I, for, for people like me, this is going to be a huge time saver. Oh yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm, I'm really into this feature. This is a very feel good blog. Too. It's like all 70s lovey dovey you know. <laughs> Alright. Those titles so, were straight out of the hippie days. So, question seeing these features play with a friend and deck importing exporting do you feel uh -huh. like this gives you any speculation to what the next set might be what we could see coming versica i still think it's going to be something old gods related i mean i know we just had whispers of the old gods but if you look geographically and wow it looks like they're working towards an area and uh I, I think you've got Angoro Crater right there. I, I, th I think they move into more of a, like an Ankarok. So I think if, it, if it's not that, I think it'll go Titans. And then I think we'll end up with something Dalaran probably in December. Uh, but I think they're going to hit one of those two factions. It just seems to fit so well with the creature and, and ghoul aspect that we kind of have going right now. And I think if you're going to add something very arcane in, I think it will be on the back end of the set so that as it rotates out, the flavor kind of rotates with it. 
that way you don't have you're not introducing a flavor and then coming back to an older flavor you're kind of working your way through it's like it's like having a a tub of neapolitan you know you don't want to eat all the the uh vanilla and then go back and eat all the strawberry and then like just do the strawberry and chocolate and leave the vanilla. That's how I, and go that's back how I eat it. Neapolitan. What but are you talking about? You want to <laughs> scoop it all the way across and get it I do it by all of it at once before you change ice creams over. So. Oh, no, no. I always, I always eat the chocolate and the vanilla and leave, throw the strawberry away. But you know. I go for the strawberry first, eat, fill it out, and then I swap. All right, so Zerosio, what are your thoughts on Prelude to I, the I think, I think this is setting up for a more friendly... Uh, community style uh, expansion. I I envision, and I've called it before, where or I've said this before, where I'm calling that the next expansion is going to be something with Dollaran. I think it'll be Mysteries of Dollaran or Cities of uh, uh, Secrets of Dollaran or something like that. Dollaran tends to also be the hub of most of the community uh, in World of Warcraft. Everybody goes to Dollaran, does their trading there, does their trade skills. And all that stuff. So I really think that Dalaran is going to be the next expansion. There's going to be a lot of implementation, maybe even more quests that to do with your friends. And then the the uh, solo experience, the adventure, will be Violet Hold, which resides in Dalaran. And there are tons of bosses in there that could be done. Uh, possibly there's a way to do a co-op. Uh, maybe you and a friend get together and and do one of the the adventures within there. That would be really cool. But I'm calling it now. I think it's something with Dollaran. I'm doing a little sleuthing on Dollaran.com. And I honestly think we're probably going to see this patch in June and uh, the expansion in July. Okay. Well, uh, Nibble in chat said it's about that time to start searching for domains purchased and people's I've resume who done I've voice doing acting. It. So, so Roche shows a little bit ahead of you there, Nibble. He's he's been doing it. So, we'll uh, let you guys know if we hear anything or uh, Zoroshio's sleuthing turns anything up. So, currently, just to kind of from what I've found so far through my sources, is Dollaran.com is available. Uh, it was purchased in Ju uh, June of 2015. It was updated June 2016, and it expires June 2017, which could possibly line up with a GoDaddy transfer. Mm -hmm. um, if they transfer to GoDaddy in June, that would set it up. Usually that's about a month out that they, they do those transfers. So end of July, maybe early August, but I think it'll be end of July. Okay. All right. Well, that brings us to our next topic, um, which is uh, this week's HGG highlights. Um, oh, yeah. So, Zoroshio, I've I've been so busy this week. I've not really had a chance to watch any of the HGG. So, why don't you give us a rundown on what's happened thus far? Well, I'm not going to go into too much detail because we left the link in the show notes for the global games. There are so there. There are 48 teams right now. They're about halfway through with the 10-week the uh, round of 48 where now you're starting to see teams that have to win to stay in it or if they get this win, they're pretty much guaranteed to move on to the top 24 uh, for, for the next three-week process on, on the second round of, uh, uh, of round play. Um, Austria, however played today and they upset Russia 3-2. Now Austria is a team that has wife coach on it. She's uh, really been coming up in the pro scene lately. She's kind of she's not the the anchor of that team, but you could tell they're playing they're playing at the uh, the life coach coach manor and there's a, they're having a lot of fun and she's really she's doing a good job of keeping them their minds focused and led them to a really big upset over Russia today. And Russia has been pretty a powerhouse in that group. Um, talking about groups, so Group H is being totally dominated by Ukraine and Czech Republic. They're both 3-0. They haven't faced each other yet. I believe that happens next week. Um, and Germany is in that group, which is the other side, Life Coach, also playing out of the Life Coach manner. Um, they are just they just can't get a win. Uh, I think they're one and two or one and three right now. 
Um, they're just having a really hard time. Uh, they're one and three with a five and nine total games record. They're they're just having a hard time getting their wheel spinning now. From what I've heard, and I don't know if he's still doing it uh, for the rest of HCG, Life Coach is bowing out of Hearthstone competitive play and moving over to competitive Gwent because he just recently took a large purse tournament and he's going to do that competitively. Uh, I haven't, Germany hasn't played since I heard that rumor, so I don't know if he, if somebody's replacing him on that team or if he's going to go ahead and finish out the Hearthstone Global Games. Uh, I guess that's to be seen. Um, USA plays next week. Uh, they're currently 3-0 and with a 9-3 uh, game record. Doing pretty good. Canada's also doing really good. Uh, they're as well 3-0. and um, Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this for this Hearthstone Global Games. Have, have you all watched any of these games at all? Yeah, I've watched a few. Yeah, I, I've watched a few matches here and there. Um I did actually watch part of the Austria Russia match, but like I, these are usually on while I'm at work, and so I can only catch bits and pieces because as I'm yeah. coming and going. So, same for me. All this is happening while I'm at work, so I'm having to catch the vods in between the normal stuff that I normally watch and any you know deck diving I do. Okay, chat says that USA plays tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't see the schedule. The schedules. A little convoluted, hard to find. They don't break it down by day. They break it down by by groups. Uh, I wish they'd make that a little more transparent. Um, they did say on the stream today that USA plays. I think they were maybe just re referencing a specific match next week. That may have been what they were talking yeah. about. So the, the schedule for each week can be found on reddit.com slash r slash hearthstone. There's a pinned post at the top of the page. Oh. That, That's why I, I don't go to Reddit. <laughs> yeah, that that has the schedule. So tomorrow there's two matches: USA versus Thailand and Taiwan versus Vietnam. So. Oh, those, now Taiwan has been playing really good. So has Vietnam. So that's going to be a really good uh, match there. Uh, Thailand's not been too slouchy. Uh, I don't think they have a very high win rate right now. Uh, they're one and one, but their matches have been really tight. They're four and five. Uh, uh, total with their games, so their their games have really gone out. Um, so that that might be a, real, a little bit of a challenge. But the Netherlands were expected to be a challenge against the United States, and we just dominated them. Yeah. So, all right. Um, so we do have a question from the chat before we move on. Uh, I wanted to get to um, Inked in chat says with the EU playoffs coming this weekend, what do y'all think of the meta? and how it will influence the upcoming tournaments. What do you guys think of the meta, and how it will influence the upcoming tournaments? Also, as a side note, the deck lists for EU playoffs have been released. I don't know if you yes. guys have had a chance to see them yet. Um, so, uh, Zeroshio, what are your thoughts on how the meta is going to influence upcoming tournaments? Uh, the meta right now is still with how long have we been doing Angora over a month now? Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's rather uh, in flux still. You're seeing certain decks rise to the top, and then other decks counter those decks, so those decks get pushed down, and then somebody rotates another deck in, or just texts a couple cards in a specific deck. Uh, Galaka Crawler and Hungry Crab are going in a lot of decks right now to counteract uh, Pirate Warrior and. Uh, the Murloc variations of, Par of Paladin. Um, I really like where meta is. I think it's a lot of, of kind of Rochambeau, kind of going back and forth. Uh, I think HGG's brought in some really good enlightenment into the meta, and it's changing every single uh, day, literally, uh, because of the, the plays they're doing, they're, the, the matches they're doing Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Uh, I'm excited for for the HCT. I don't think I don't think you'll see a lot of Warlock, and I think you will see a lot of Priest, Druid, and Paladin. Um, that's actually pretty refreshing. When we were before we got into Angoro, you literally had like three, four classes rotating in in, in, in the top spot, and a couple speckle classes here and there. You had two, sometimes three classes that weren't. In, 
in tournaments at all, and and that's not the case this time. You you probably won't see Warlock hasn't been flushed out. Other than that, all the classes are being represented. Okay, uh, Versica, what are your thoughts? I think aggro is still really strong. Um, I think if you're playing the odds, then um, I think you bring aggro to this tournament. And I think that in the end, it may be a mid-range or control player that takes it, but I think it's going to be someone who just luckily drew people trying to counter the meta, or maybe maybe someone not playing decks that they normally play because they think that bringing the best decks will be the best part or the, the best way to get there so in, in the end i think the person that wins will be either the person that can beat um they can beat control and tempo with aggro um with a single aggro deck but still manages to kind of close with control and tempo. So I, I think the person that wins is, is going to have a balanced lineup. I think they'll have aggro, maybe two aggro decks, a control deck and a tempo deck. And so they're going to win by forcing their opponents to try and ban the worst matchup, which they do anyway. But it, it's going to be one of those things where their lineup is going to be set that no matter what you ban, you're going to have a hard time handling the entire line. line. Like there's no way you're going to be able to prepare for a particular type of play style in this meta which I guess in, in, in the grand scheme of things that's what we kind of wanted but I do still feel like aggro is the most powerful um, so it's whoever figures out that right that correct balance of aggro mid-range and control and then that person is going to win in the um, they're going to win in the band pick phase rather than necessarily yeah. winning because they brought the best decks it's going to be trying mm -hmm. to figure out which deck you can beat out of their lineup rather than well I mean does that make sense yeah like what I, I oh, guess yeah. what I'm yeah, trying definitely. to say is you know you, you look at it you look at strategy and some of the strategies people have done is they're like okay I'm not going to get beaten by pirate warrior so I'm going to ban the deck I think I have the hardest pr pr problem with and then I'm going to target pirate warrior and force them to win with pirate warrior and I don't think you're going to be able to do that for the first time since Conquest format has come out, I don't think you're going to be able to do that at all. Yeah, and, and, and I see what you're saying there. And one thing I really like is right now if you see somebody playing Warrior, you don't they, – they're not always playing Pirate Warrior. They could be playing uh, the Taunt Warrior out there. Now, with the HCT, they, each opponent gets to see your deck list ahead of time. I wish they'd go back to not seeing your deck list. I understand why they did it, uh, and, and and I support that. But I'd love the surprise of going into a match. And that's one thing you're seeing in the Hearthstone Global games is they know they bring Warrior, but they don't know if it's Pirate Warrior, and they don't know if it's – or Taunt Warrior or, or what variation of Paladin. So they, they kind of have to feel out those first few turns to feel out what the deck is to know how to continue playing. Um, Right now, in, in the heart, uh, in the uh, uh, team Heart League that I do, the the Hearthstone League that I'm in, uh, we use a conquest format, and that's something that I'm noticing is people are bringing classes every week that have two and three different types of decks, uh, so that you can't just go in there and say, well, obviously it's going to be Pirate Warrior, so I'm going to target it or I'm going to ban it. Uh, they may not be, and and so Paladin, Druid, and uh, warrior, real popular bring. Well, to actually, these, actually, these I, let's 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 do the class distribution real quick because uh -huh. um, HearthstoneTopDecks.com has has a really great article breaking down the majority of the EU playoffs decks. Um, now they don't have all of them listed currently, but they've got a majority of them. And right now, the there are twelve Druid decks, mm -hmm. three Hunter decks, six Mage. Nine Paladin decks, three Priest decks, nine Rogue decks, uh, six Shaman decks, zero Warlock decks, yes, and eight Warrior decks. 
further breaking that down by deck type, in Druid, which was the most popular, you have Jade Druid and Token Druid. The next most popular was Paladin, which is actually broken down into Control Paladin, Nazoth Paladin, Aggro Murloc Paladin, and Midrange Paladin. Oh yeah. Your next most popular was Rogue, which is broken down into Miracle Rogue and Quest Rogue. So yep. there's a pretty diverse group of decks bring being brought to the EU playoffs. It should it's be as diverse really interesting as we've work. seen it. This is yeah, as diverse yeah. as we've seen it since the first year. Absolutely. Really. Definitely. This is the most diverse meta we've seen and, in a long time. And also something to note is this isn't as diverse as it could be uh, because a lot of tournaments, especially the ones that don't expose the decks ahead of time, Agro Druid is, is in there and variations of uh, of Shaman are in there. Control va control Shaman, Elemental Shaman, and even some variations in the middle of like Jade and Azoth Shaman. Um, so it it's really neat to see this diversity and then as we move over to the different region with Asia Pacific and uh, the Americas tournaments, you might see more aggro uh, go into the meta. So you'll see even further diversity. I actually agree with Zeroshio <gasps> on his point. Um, oh, no. <laughs> quite a bit. Um, you know, you can watch teams, like in football, you can watch film on teams. You can mm -hmm. watch their plays. You know, if you compete in Heroes of the Storm, um, you know, there's some strategies that you're able to to keep back. But for the most part, you get to watch these people play, especially now that HGC is a thing and you're watching them play week in and week out. At this point, I don't know that you're really protecting very much by having the deck list exposed for streamers because net decking is so popular anyway. Yeah. I think if you added the surprise factor back to Hearthstone in the sense that nobody knows what you're bringing, then suddenly deck creation, deck modification, and, and deck adaptation are abundant and then you get to see crazy things come out in the middle of the tournament things that maybe you didn't expect you might suddenly see cards that aren't really seeing play on the ladder suddenly pop up in the tournament scene because people aren't expecting them and yeah. i think that could be really good for the game and I, I i mean there's a lot of critics of the conquest format and i don't know that it's necessarily the conquest format that's the problem i think it's more that you know the deck lists that are being brought, and that allows you to abuse the mechanic of Conquest format, which is the you have to win with th with the three remaining decks. You take away being able to see what your opponent's bringing, and suddenly winning with your three remaining decks is a lot more difficult because you can't really know right off the bat which one to ban. You yeah. have to prepare your decks in a way that and I'm going to use Shaman for example because that's that's what I play. If if you're coming into the tournament and and you're coming up, you're a known competitor to me. Like I'm a known competitor in the circuit. People know that I play Shaman like in our firesides. But suddenly you have to prepare for aggro Shaman. You have to prepare for tempo Shaman. You have to prepare for mid range Shaman, and you have to prepare for control Shaman because I have brought all of those to firesides before, Dang. and you don't know what I'm going to play now. Let's say the aggro shaman isn't big in the meta at the moment. But it's not big on the ladder. That doesn't mean that I can't bring it to a tournament and absolutely wreck face with it because no one is expecting it. Now, by the time we get two or three rounds in, well, then you can be like, I don't really want to play against that deck. But then you don't know what I've been ban what's been banned. You don't necessarily get to see that deck. So, it's it it adds a sense of strategy that encourages risk taking. Yes. But in a way that you have to modify your strategy when you get into the tournament, and I like that. You don't know going in. You have to come in a little more broad spectrum, and then you have to adapt and modify that as you go through. And I think that will really separate the people who are very good at this game from the people that are very good at taking a deck they found on the Internet and making it work. Now – Hearthstone Global Games is, is proving this fact. They're not showing the decks, and, and you're seeing the casters get surprised by some of the techs that are in there, or the odd cards, or the main decking, mind control, and priest, 
and getting flabbergasted by it. Um, one other thing, one other format or, or, or group that has done this well is DreamHack. At DreamHack, your decks are not revealed during the Swiss stages, but once you get to the round of 16, your decks are then revealed so everybody can look at them. Uh, I would love to see something like this. Maybe in the playoffs, the decks aren't revealed. They have to submit them, but they're not revealed. But then once you they go to the to, to the later stages, the single elimination, then the decks are revealed. Uh, that allows for creativity to kind of, you know, that surprise factor to help you off the ground. But then at the same time, it also, in the latter stages, uh, you also have to build a solid deck and not just win by the surprise factor. Uh, I think that Blizzard could take some notes from, from DreamHack. They've been very successful with it. Now, mind you, that is a last hero standing uh, format instead of a conquest, but I think it would work there too. Okay, cool. Um, so it's a good discussion. I like yeah, that. We got to yeah, talk it, about that, that later. That was a good question. Um, as yeah. as Neonic uh, so noted in chat, uh, once Versica agrees with Zeroshio, we've got nothing left, guys. It's been eighty one episodes. We'll see you guys on our next show. We don't know what it is. <laughs> Hero power out. No. <laughs> There is a, there is somebody mentioned in chat. Um, do you guys have any merch available? I would love a Hero Power tee. Um, that's something we've talked about uh, amongst it, us it's, hosts. It's it's actually something I've been working on more than you guys we, probably know behind the scenes. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, things we want to do. We want we want to do the Hero Power uh, Laboratory, uh, the Alchemy Lab. Uh, we have a lot of goals. We're we're still working on formatting those goals setting priority and then we'll set some patron goals for those things because getting merchandise on if you if you listen to any other podcasts that have merch stores it does take a little bit of financial investment to get those those uh that merchandise available even if it's just something as simple as a t-shirt mouse pads mugs stuff like that you do have there is some investment in that so we would have to set a patron goal Uh, but that's something we're looking at in the future Uh, i do have some connections with with that kind of merchandise uh, it's just a matter of uh putting all that together so that's something we're looking forward to good question uh bbh all right well uh that brings us to this week's tavern brawl which is a repeat tavern brawl uh this, repeat, was, repeat. this was last seen in march of 2016 uh that would have been tavern brawl number 41 so it's been 60 tavern brawl since we've seen it but it is over an, a year. Yeah, yeah. It is an evil exchange. Kelthazad and Rafam are competing to see who the superior end boss is. Take a side and battle for evil supremacy. So, I've been really busy today. Had a lot of errands to run. Uh, so I've not gotten to actually do this tavern brawl yet. Uh, Zeroshio, have you? Yeah, I played a few. Um... Usually with these type of tavern brawls, one one uh, side is is overbalanced. I'm kind of seeing them pretty balanced. Uh, having Rafam's ability to – he has a hero power that gives you a card uh, at a reduced cost, and it starts out as rare, and you can upgrade it to epic and then legendary. Uh, it's really neat with the new cards. And then they've kind of balanced out Kel'Thuzad. I think some of the – some of the uh, bosses he summons uh, is a little more advanced than they were back on uh, Tavern Brawl 41. It seems like they've tweaked him a little bit to balance him out. Um, I've enjoyed it. it. It's rather RNG-based uh, uh, because you don't know what cards you're going to get. or Really, a lot of your power comes from the random stuff that happens. Uh, but it's fun. It's, it's, it's definitely a fun one to do with your friends. Okay, cool. Versika, have you had a chance to play yet? No, I, I actually I didn't care much for this tavern brawl the first time around. So um, for me, this one's probably more of a chore than most. So I uh, I have not uh, done that yet. I'll probably wait until Saturday morning and just kind of play until I get reform and do my best. Um, if I remember correctly, even in in chat saying reform is is pretty powerful. If I remember correctly. Uh, the last time that we we ran this, I think KT was the overpowered. Yeah, and see, we're seeing it both ways. Ink says Rafam is OP. Nibble says I owned with KT. And this tends to be what I find out, too, is when people say one's overpowered and other people 
people's experience of the other one's overpowered, which tells me it's balanced. Yeah. But well, I just this this one because it is so RNG yeah. isn't one that I just rush out to play. So I will play it. I I I, I will play it until I get my pack. But um, this just isn't my style of tavern brawl. So okay, cool. Well, that brings us that brings us to this week's deck, which we are all super excited for. This was a deck we really yeah. wanted to feature on the show as soon as possible. We were actually going to do it last week until uh, we got word from QWERTY that he was going to be able to be on the show, so we bumped this deck to this week. It is uh, the Gunter Mage deck, which has been made popular by uh, Cy Gunter, who got rank 1 legend on the EU server with this deck list. It's also commonly referred to as Discover Mage. Um, it's, it's, uh, a really popular deck right now. You're probably seeing a lot of it on the ladder. Um, I'm going to run down the deck list like I usually do, and then I will turn it over to Zeroshio, who's been playing a lot of this deck this week, um, and let him kind of talk you through it and how it works. So the deck list consists of two Mana Worms, two Arcanologists, one Blood Mage Thalnos, Two Frost Bolts, two Medivh's Valet, two Primordial Glyph, two Arcane Intellect, one Gluttonous Ooze, one Ice Barrier, two Ice Block, two Cobble Courier, Cabal Courier, there you go, drink. Take a shot. <laughs> All right, one Volcanic Potion, two Fireballs, one Polymorph, one Meteor, two Firelands Portals, one Flame Strike. One Medivh the Guardian, one Alex Straza, and one Pyroblast. So take it away, Zeroshio. Uh, this deck is a lot of fun to play. I've been playing it for a couple weeks, but since Sunday, uh, I actually went from. Uh, well, not, I really didn't play much on Sunday, so technically Monday. I went 17 and 6, and I went shot, shot up from rank 13 to 5 with it. Uh, the big takeaway from playing this deck is you need to control the board. Use your burn sparingly. Uh, a lot of your discover effects are what you're going to use to to keep tempo on this on, on in the game. And then at one point you just you either try to set up for the late game Alexstrasza with the pyroblast, the combination of spells to burn your opponent down, or you just ignore their board and go straight for face with burn and race them. Uh, you do feel like you're playing from behind a lot with this deck. There's been many times I'm like, well, there's no way I can win. Let me just start burning face, and I win. So it 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 does become a little draw dependent. Basically, you have to go, well, if I send all my burn to face, and next turn I happen to draw one of these three cards, I'll win the game. And that's pretty much how you have to, to, uh, to play it. A little bit on the edge. I really like this deck. It's done well for me. I'm hoping it does well for a while. It's actually been popular, very popular since DreamHack Austin and still gaining popularity. Um, there are other mage decks in this it, that are coming through with Secret Mage. It does well against Secret Mage and Freeze Mage. Uh, I actually only really have trouble with uh, Druid kind of gets, gives me a little trouble, but most of the classes, uh, I think I'm 50% with Druid. Um, and, and Priest gets a little iffy. Uh, but I've got a positive win rate, and I, I, I'm not going to put this deck down until it starts losing. Okay. Uh, Vrasika, have you had a chance to play this deck any? I was the one that suggested it. Of course I've had a chance to play this deck. <laughs> um, yeah, my, my list is just a little different than the one we're running tonight. Surprise, surprise. Naturally. naturally. Um, I actually I felt like it needed a little more board presence than what it had. So I actually don't run Blood Mage Thalnos, and um, I only run one Firelands Portal. I instead have Harrison Jones and the Black Knight um, in this deck. Um, I like the Black Knight because it's a 4 or 5 body, and there's so much taunt out there right now. I usually get pretty good value out of it, and I feel like one of the deck's weaknesses is card draw, so Harrison allows me to take out some Arcanaut Reapers that are getting a little too big for their britches and so on and so forth. Um, I have found 
that this deck does better when uh, you can take not necessarily it doesn't necessarily need the coin but when you can take the coin away from your opponent this deck tends to do a little bit better yeah <laughs> I would agree with that all right cool well I for one am ready to play this deck I don't know about you guys yeah. but I, I love this deck so uh, I've I've played it uh, a couple of games. I uh, actually played it once this morning while sitting in the waiting room at the doctor's office and uh, got a win with it. So uh, it's all, it's just so much fun to play. So, All right. Well, guys, if you are joining us on Twitch or YouTube, please stay oh, tuned. Last thoughts. No. Last thoughts. Okay. What do you got? Reminder. Well, not a reminder because we haven't even said it yet. Next week, we will not be doing the show on Wednesday. That is uh, we will be we will be doing the show on Thursday. We have some family commitments on Wednesday. My son's um, birthday is Wednesday. You can blame him. Uh, yeah, we're we we're taking him, him out to dinner Wednesday night, so uh, uh, we will do the show Thursday night instead. Yeah, and we are going to have a guest on, uh, a member in, in the community. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so we will be here Thursday, same time, seven thirty. Uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, that that's that's the only that's the only last thoughts I had. Okay, uh, Versica, anything you want to add? That's pretty much what's going on. Um, we're excited. We've been trying to get our our guest for next week on for quite some time. What three cycles now? Yeah, I've it's been at least. Do, three do we want to do we want to keep them in suspense or should we just go ahead and announce it? Up to you. All right. Uh, we are extremely excited to announce oh, yeah. that we are going to have Andrew, who is the host of the Happy Hearthstone podcast, on the show. Uh, if you guys are not familiar, Happy Hearthstone is the longest running Hearthstone podcast on the internet. It was originally oh, yeah. started by Josh Augustine, and then Andrew took over recently. And uh, he's done a fantastic job with the show, oh, yeah. and we're super excited was, to was, be able to get him. He was also part of Velen's Chosen. He was. Uh, he was uh, one of the original members of Velen's Chosen. Yep. So we're super excited to have him on. And we have been trying to get him for a while. I oh, was yeah. looking, looking back at my notes um, just now, and it looks like the first time we tried to get him was coming up on episode 60. So. Yeah. And he's always had uh, he's always had some uh, he real life stuff going on. Most of his work schedule is really heavy on Wednesdays, but he's had a recent change of life and actually reached out to us and said, "Hey, I would love to be on the show because uh, I can I can do Wednesdays now." And I was like, "Well, we got to move it to Thursday." He's like, "Well, that's <laughs> so yeah. uh, I can't wait to have him on. Uh, he's gonna. I think we're gonna." Play some Paladin. So if you if you want to learn some Paladin, uh, definitely uh, Make cue sure in, next, in week. next week. Yeah. Yep. All right. So try this again. If you are joining us on Twitch or YouTube, please stay tuned for the live play portion of our show. If you are listening via our audio podcast, we'd like to thank you for joining us at this time. Remember, you can always follow us on Twitter at Hero Power underscore Cast. You can find all of our past episodes on YouTube at youtube.com slash ecmmogamers or on our website at heropowerhs.com. If you enjoy the show and you would like to help support and improve it or hang out with us in our patron-only Discord, you can join us there by going to patreon.com slash hero power and for as little as a dollar a week you can join our uh, discord a group. dollar a week holy or crap a dollar a month yeah dollar a month dollar, dollar a month. month you can join our uh, discord group but until then we'll see you again next week and don't forget to use your hero power all right gentlemen Freudian slip of the tongue. <laughs> that's that's all right. You did it the other direction. That's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. So uh, while we are setting up to play some Gunter Mage, uh, Versika, tell us a little more about Valforce. 
All right, so earlier I was talking about uh, going to the website where I found the Dell that was pretty close to um, what you could get spec as far as specs for the uh, for the vector. So I, I went back to where I was. History is a great thing in your Internet uh, Explorer. Um, so I went back and actually the 749 price point that I was talking about is an instant savings of $100 that they've got going on right now. So the, the system is normally 849 and that's just that's just buying it off the site. So I went to where you can get the, uh, the added warranty. Now it does not have the six the six month warranty, the six month guarantee that Viforce has. Uh, the, the closest thing you can get to the six month guarantee that Viforce offers is a two year drops and spills uh, warranty, but you have to pay an extra $150 uh, to get that warranty. Um, so you know, when, you, when you're looking for products to purchase, you want to make sure that you're purchasing things that um, that their manufacturer, that their builder, that their supplier stands behind. And with a six month guarantee, offering to pay the shipping to send it back and send it back to you, that's that's an awesome guarantee. And that to me, that speaks volumes about Viforce's commitment to customer service and their commitment to quality as well. So check them out, ViforceGaming.com, or you can go to our website, HeroPowerHS.com, click on the ViForce link on the side. They've actually done a little bit of work on their website, so if you've not been there in a while, you should you should go and check it out. All right, well, let's do this. Uh, let me know when you are in a match there, and we will spectate you, Sorosio. I am finding a worthy opponent as we speak. Oh, okay. Did you find one? I was worried I had uh, Spectate off because you have to turn Spectate off for Team Heart League. But I see you're spectating me, so we're good. So, Mulligan, you're going to want to pretty much look for your early uh, early removal and draw engines. Uh, against Druid, none of these. We're, we're going to ditch these. We have Gluttonous Zeus, Fireball, and Alexstrasza. We don't need any of these. We want to see things... Um, like Archaeologist, Mana Worm, maybe Primordial Glyph and Arcane Intellect, depending if we have the coin. Ooh, that's not bad. Ar Archaeologist and Cowboy Courier is good. Medivh's a little premature. And we'll just pass the first turn. His deck is extremely reactive. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. I did not get any response. I was like, what's going on? Okay. Yeah, this deck is extremely reactive. Um, turn two, we can just Archonologist. Uh, obviously, he can run his crawler in and use his hero power, but then we can ping off the crawler if we want to. Uh, that sound good to you guys? Yeah. Yeah, I think that'll work. The... The Archaeologist is going to draw you a, a, uh, a secret. More importantly, it's thinning your deck. So basically, you can get to those things you'll need, like, you know, volcan a volcanic potion. Ooh. He's going to beef up on us. Okay. So Gluttonous Ooze is really... There's, there's not going to be any weapons in Druid. And we drew into Gluttonous Ooze. My original thought was Cobalt Courier. Uh, but we really don't know what we need to search for with Cobalt Courier yet. Uh, this is probably some form of Aggro Druid. Mm -hmm. um, thinking about just tempoing out to Gluttonous Ooze to challenge the, the Crawler. What do you guys think? Uh, I think that's probably a good idea. Matt at Arms in chat says it's looking like it could be egg, possibly Egg Druid. Yeah, I mean... Egg Druid doesn't have eggs in it anymore. They, right. they it's don't, more they of a token much. Druid. Yeah, or Agro Druid, whichever way you want to say it. So Gluttonous Ooze here? Yeah, I think so. They don't usually run Swipe. Uh, or if they do, it's usually just a one-of. So we don't have to worry about that too much. 
I'd love to get into a volcanic potion. Especially now. <laughs> While he is dumping his hand. Mark of the Lotus. Oh my gosh. He is fully committing to this board. Yep, he is. We need to find a way to get rid of it. Or to deal with it. Yeah, and unfortunately... We're not seeing a lot of answers. Yeah, so do you think we just play the Cabal Courier here and hope for an AoE potion? That's what I'm hoping for. We're going to be taking uh, t at least 12 this next turn, which is pretty threatening. We need to get some kind of AoE. I like the Cabal here. What do you think, Rasika? The next turn, we're going to be on 5, so there's no answers on turn 5. We'll deep be dead by turn six yeah that's no we can ice block we can, we can ice block. no you we can ice block next turn. um i think you could make a case for arcane intellect i don't know i think cabal courier i think if you're going to pull a potion volcanic i don't know you potion. might get last do, do you think we need to just arcane intellect and hope for volcanic potion i think i, like, I would i would intellect i like the intellect let's go ahead with the intellect blood mage just not bad fireball could be better. Would love to draw on, <laughs> oh, excuse me, the volcanic potion. Yeah, this is looking rough. I mean, we can yeah. we'll obviously be able to buy a turn next turn. Well, it's it's Ice hard block. to hard to compete against LeBron. You know, we're playing King James yeah, here. King James, that's right, that's right. There's Frostbolt that can tie something up. I mean, we can frostbolt the Galaka Crawler. Um, Buys us that, another turn. Yeah, and we can throw up Ice Block just in case he has some burst. Yeah. yeah. The Ice Block and Frostbolt? I think so. Now we're basically, this is what I'm talking about. Where, especially against Aggro, you play from behind. But if you can get into those turns 8, turn 9, you can turn the tide. And I've won a lot of games where I'm just sitting at one health when I finally win. So the delay in the attack was he was testing for Ice Barrier. So he's going to pop us at 6, which isn't the worst. So the Arcanologist can get us another Ice Block. Well, we could... Mm, we could almost clear the board. Use the Whelps to kill Leroy and then drop the Meteor. And all, it would leave him with a 2-2. Two -two. I actually really like that. Yeah, but... So, you're talking about using both Wolves to kill Leroy? Uh-huh. Yeah. And then dropping the Meteor... And... won't leave a 2-2 because uh, the Bloodsoul Corsair won't die. Because it's 3-4. Oh, you're right. Well, then drop the Meteor on the 3-4 and it'll kill the, the Patches and it'll still leave the 2-2. Two -two. I'm like an Archonologist to see if we can get... Uh, we'll either get an Ice Barrier or Ice Block. Okay. You think that's a good start? Yeah, we can do that. So there's the ice block. Kill Leroy and cast ice block? Sure. Yeah. Th this is just us trying to stay alive. Because <laughs> he only has two cards in his hand. I would have liked the ice barrier because it would negate all of it. I guess it's the same as ice block, kind of. See, now we can do some chicanery and actually clear the board with with uh, Meteor if we need to. Oh, put it on. Okay. That changes things slightly. Ugh, not looking good. No. You can courier and see if you get a... Yeah. Rejuvenation potion. That would be nice. I mean, we get stuff from Priest, any kind of healing from Priest. Holy fire, we can't cast it. Nope, we can't use any of that. That, I believe, is game, gentlemen. Yep. Yeah, I'm just going to snap the... I'm going to throw the other Cabal Courier down just to see if I can pull something. <laughs> well, there's Lyra. would have been these <laughs> neat, but... And and uh, this tends to be the worst matchup 
special that I found for the deck is Druid. Um, it's usually pretty good against Jade Druid, mm -hmm. but this this new variety of this token style aggro Druid is just it just tears through you too fast. Uh, Pirate Warrior actually isn't too terribly bad. It's not as it's not as fast as the aggro Druid if the aggro Druid draws correctly. Now I played the aggro Druid quite a bit, and it just draws dead sometimes. But our opponent didn't draw dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mirror um, match. Yeah, mirror match. Here we go. Now, uh, the gluttonous ooze is you want to usually hold on to and for their... Yes. Uh, Atiesh. Yeah, exactly. Um, we have Ice Barrier, Two Medivh's Valet, and Polymorph. In this matchup, it's probably going to start a little slow. I like keeping one valet and one and the ice barrier. What do you think? I would agree with that. Yeah, we we would be nice to draw a mana worm. Oh, I'd love to draw a mana worm. Uh, mana worm, if you can't deal with it, coin into ice barrier. Yeah. No. Yep. He has his mana worm, and this may actually be a Gunther Mage mirror match. I would. Probably coin. I'm trying to no, think of the mer there's merit no coin, coin ballet. Coining. No, because you don't have a secret. So you no. don't get the. No, no, yeah, you no. don't get. Well, next turn we could coin the ice block uh, barrier and then I was on thinking, turn three kill that with the ballet. I was thinking next. I was thinking next turn coin the courage. Actually, no, we couldn't because it probably wouldn't survive. The yeah, the ice barrier won't stick survive, around. Yeah. Good if that's ice block. Uh, yeah. Coining the Cabal Courier is probably better next turn. Yeah, that's what I was but thinking. I think we're going to pass this turn. Yeah. Be nice to draw an Ar Archaeologist and then you wouldn't have to coin yeah. anything. Exactly. And maybe we will draw an Archaeologist to challenge the board a little bit. And this could be Secret Mage. This could be Gunther Mage. Double Mana got, Worm. That's usually whoever gets a double Mana Worm. So it's. It's, that's gonna be tough for us. Um, <laughs> coin out cabal. I still think you coin out cabal. Yeah. Kirantor mage, North Shark cleric, Kazakas. Now Kazakas, if it goes late enough, anything for us right now. If it goes late enough, we might we might be able to use it. Yeah, but we could take the Kirantor and play our secret for yep. free. Yeah, I, I think I like Kirin the Kirantor here. I think the Karen Tour is a grab, too. I'm just giving, giving food for thought with Kazakas. I've won some games off the back of getting a late Kazakas off a of Cabal Courier where I uh, where I know that I've weeded my deck down to one ounce. Well, that Courier ate a Frostbolt for us. It did. It did, which is really good. Uh, I think you Karen Tour, Ice Barrier, pass. Yep, I like that. And this, this challenges the mana worms, at least one of them. He may just go straight for face. Well, that wouldn't be an awful thing. We can kill one of them and then uh, polymorph or fireball the other. Yeah. Kind of want to save your fireballs if you can, but in this matchup, it may not have that luxury. I don't know. I think you probably arcane intellect take out one of the mana worms with the uh, mage. I think you're right there. Um, we don't have to clear both of these this turn. We do need to draw into answers though. So I'm an arcane intellect. There's a mana worm. I don't think we put him out though. I don't either. No. Nah. So clear one. Yeah. Yeah. But it lines up. We could uh, mana worm into fireball next turn if we have to. Yeah, I think we're in a Gunther mirror match. I would agree with that assessment. 
Which all damage down to 15 health was negligible anyways at this point, so... I think we gotta fireball that that uh, mana worm. You think mana worm fireball? It just dies to courier and fire blast next turn. It does, but it at least deals with courier. Yeah. I think that's fine. I actually. What what would you think about it? What, what what would you think about one of your valets, blood mage and mana worm, and give him choices? And not clear either one of those. And not clear either one. We've got Damn. other we've got other AOE in the deck. I mean, we that's do. a possibility. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Just loading down. Yeah, load up the board and make him choose how he make wants him to deal feel with like it. he has to clear it. can feel like he has to do something with our board. <laughs> Kabbalist tone. He's going to go face that man of worm. Oh, yeah. Oh, face, face. Okay. Hmm. So there's nothing that prevents us from running into that mana worm. No. You just want to run, run the Thanos in first? I think we run the Thanos in first. See what we get. It's a frost bolt. Nice. And then Do you frost bolt it? I frost think bolt. you frost bolt the worm. Yep. I think you frost bolt it and run the valet into if it doesn't get counterspell. Right. That's why you test with the Frostbolt. Yep. Because now it's you can either polymorph it or, or just run in with the valet. Maybe we just run in with the valet. Yeah. What do you think? Yep. Uh, absolutely. And then I say go ahead and ping the 2-2. Two -two. Make him feel like he has to trade it. Yeah. Because we'll, uh, we'll just ping it next turn if he doesn't. I think he's got burn in hand, which is by why he, why he's been running face. I would really like to see an ice block. Firelight's portal face. Yep. Ooh. Ooh, that's not a good one. That. Well, we've got options to get rid of it. Um, I so... think we're dead. Oh, you think we're dead to fireball ping next turn? Yeah. But I don't have any answers on my hand to draw into answers. But I think this turn we have to fireball ping the uh, Gurubashi and then clear the 2 1 with the Mana Worm. What do you think? What do you think about just frost bolting the Gurubashi to freeze it in place for a turn and ping the 2 1? To what purpose, I guess. Yeah, I, I think the fireball is a better use of our mana right now. Yeah. We may need a low-cost spell right. later to fit in somewhere. I think I think Zero is right. I think we're just dead. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's done the math. Fireball ping, he's got us. Here comes a BM. Ping first and then fireball. Act like he's choosing. Yeah. You're not choosing. Do we got time for one more? Yeah. So what have we learned about the deck so far? We've learned that against the mirror match, board presence is important. Oh, against yeah. Against Druid... You have to take care of their early game, or you're going yeah, to you, you really need the, the uh, Volcanic Potions for Druid uh, early game. Volcanic Potion, Even, there's only one. Yeah, yeah, you need the Volcanic... Well, 
you say there's only one, but there are ways to get volcanic potion other there than are. one yeah. deck. I've used three or four volcanic potions in the game because I've gotten them off Cabal Courier and uh, Primordial Glyph, which is a good pick. Yeah, we've not seen a glyph yet in two games either. Oh, yeah, we've got some bad draws. Uh, I think we just keep the Medivh's Valet. Yeah. I think you pitch it all. Pitch okay. it all, not even the Valet? Yep, I think you pitch it all. I can get behind that. I guess Priest, the Valet, is kind of negligible. I mean, you, you're really only worried about taking out... There we go. Here we go. Cleric early. So... Our new opening hand is Primordial Glyph, Mana Worm, Blood Mage Thalnos, Archaeologist, uh, the coin, and a second Archaeologist. Well, the Mana Worm's probably going to eat a pain. Yeah, I would just straight up cast Mana Worm. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think so. so. Yeah, Because even if so, it eats up a pain. If it eats a pain, that's good. If uh, it's radiant elemental, oh, quest, quest priest. What do you think about coining into uh, arcane intellect and killing the the exactly elemental? Exactly what I was thinking. Yep, I think you absolutely do it. I originally was thinking of a primordial hey. gift. Glyph play until we drew into the uh, into the arcane intellect, and having a mana worm at three one isn't too bad. He doesn't have a lot of spot removal. Trying to wait for us to get that mana worm up to five attack, but I don't see an obvious way unless we get something off the glyph. No, but you. <clears throat> I think you try, maybe. Play the glyph, see what you get, because it'll be reduced by what, two? Yeah. Do you so want to try? You could conceivably get a. You could get frost a frostbolt, frostbolt yeah. or osblock. Yeah. You've got a yeah. lot of options. Go for Primordial? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can't cast the Shatter. No. I think we just grab the Pyroblast for a late game. I love Pyroblast. So remember, it's going to be reduced by two. Yeah. yeah. So maybe you take the giant arcane missiles for later. You think? We think. Our blast is fine. I was yeah. thinking taking the shatter and casting it just to clear the. You, you one can't. Five. Can't. You can't. There's not a valid target, so you can't cast shatter <laughs> at all. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you can, it, uh, shatter won't. It won't let you ta cast on anything. That's why it wasn't an option. Because it's not already frozen. Yeah. Right. yeah. You're if right. something was frozen, yeah. If it was, say. Freezing potion. So now, been... now we have to figure out how we're going to get rid of this one three. I really don't want to invest a fireball into it, but we can't let him draw anymore. What do you guys think? What about... Uh, Honestly, I think you drop both the Archaeologist. Go ahead and draw those secrets. For sure. And kill it next turn. Okay. It'll be back to five next turn, but we could uh, Volcanic Potion and run yeah. stuff in. You don't even need a Volcanic Potion. You can just run them both in and ping it. Yeah, we can do that too. Yeah. Here comes the Death Rattles. Yeah. So, uh, Mana Worm, Fireball, the 2-5, clear the the Cleric. I like that. Yep, I like that. Gives us a good board. 
I think he put us on not having a fireball. Yeah, I like that a lot. And having a pyroblast at eight mana can really couple you uh, with things like frostbolt, even a ping to do eleven points of damage were unexpected, where they don't expect it. He's gonna use the potion of madness to clear our mana worm. Oh, he's doing the mana worm. That's that's good. Okay, so we're on six mana now. Cabal Courier like, and see what we get or I like Courier and then Ice Barrier. We don't get Let's Courier to first and see what we see what we get. Hot steel. Hot steel wouldn't be too bad. Frost Nova might help us with the board when he is Oths. What do you what think? Are your thoughts? Uh, you know, Thought Steel's good. Tar Lurker's actually pretty advantageous, too, because he cannot get rid of it during his turn. Nope. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. The Tar Lurker's actually not terrible. I think it's Thought Steel or Tar Lurker. What do you think? Thought Steel's the best value. Yeah, I think Thought Steel's probably still your best value. Okay. So do we clear and ping this, or do we put out Ice Block? Uh, uh, clear and ping, that way he doesn't get to choose. He played it right away. Firelands portal. Yeah. Yep. That's all right. Oh. We're gonna do this. Ooh. Well, this gives us information. Him. He has two minions in uh, in hand in his hand, so yeah. that gives us some information. One so of them he's been holding on to for a while. So yeah. We yeah, I think we just return the favor. Yep. Yeah. I agree. And it's probably good. Oh. <laughs> That's horrible. I have gotten Starring Buzzard off of Firelands Portal more times than I want to admit. And see, against this quest priest, if they get the quest off, we just wait for him to Amara and then we Alex draws them. So do Boy, we just medite I think we medite. I think we medite. Karen would be such a good target for Polymorph if we had it, but... Yeah, sure would. An eight mana pyroblast seems good with that TS, but we really don't want to pyroblast anything. Right. Unless, unless how, we, how soon? He's three out of seven on his quest. Yeah, he's got a bit of ways to go. He only has one min. Well, the one minion we know of. How's he That's two off? that come back with Nazar. So he didn't get the death, basically. He's digging. For, he should have done the second Shadow Vision before he traded in. Oh, that's what he's doing. He's trying to get Karen again. Smart. Polymorph a turn too late. Yeah. We could do 17 to his face right now. And develop an eight mana minion on the board. See, I like that. Make him to have to finish his quest right away. Yeah, he's got a long way to go. Yep, I like that. It puts him at nine. Let's let's pyroblast first. See what minion we get. Eight mana minions aren't as good as it used to be with Ragnaros fade, fading out. Uh, not terrible. You think the one mana from ATS will matter? We've got, yeah, we got pyro, we got frostbolt in our hand with ping. That's four. So do we go face with Atiesh? Mm, no, because no. we ultimately won't fireball anyway. Yeah. Okay. I don't think he can clear. If we went to face with Atiesh, that would tell him we have burn in our hand, and he has to do something. Right. Which we don't really have burn in our hand. Uh. 
we, we can Blood Mage, Frostbolt for four, Ping for five. He has to get rid of that Boogie Monster. It's probably Boogie. a double trade. Yeah. yeah. But then he doesn't... Oh. Uh, dra a Dragonfire Potion? Gotta be a Dragonfire Potion. Yeah. yeah. That's actually not bad for us. There we go. Let's okay, so start the glyph. We, I think we thought steel first. Okay. But can we get any damage off thought steel? I don't think yes. we can. What's thought, he gonna run this deck that's damage? Thought steel's gonna put us at ten cards to keep that in mind. Yeah. I, I mean, we'll ultimately you're still gonna glyph, but it's whatever. I think, yeah. Yeah, I so. think we, I, I like the thought steel, but I think we glyph first just in case. We have a better chance of getting burn off of our glyph than we do off of thought steel. There's a power blast that yep. wins the game. Yep. Oh, no, 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 no. I got to attack with Atias first. Or I would have developed an 8-man. And, and don't forget to oops. Don't yeah. forget to oops. oops. <laughs> good job. That was a good game. That was a good game. Yeah, I almost made a mistake there. If we would have power blast, Atias would have made us an 8-man minion. We wouldn't have had lethal that turn. So... Yeah. Yeah. All right. Those are, those are good match. Those are the matches I like to see. Uh, the meta is so on, a, on its heels right now that uh, it's hard to get the matchups you want on the ladder. But I'm doing well with this. Overall, from my entire time playing with, with this deck, I'm 34 and 24, which is 59%. In recent times, uh, not counting tonight, uh, I was 17 and 6 since this weekend. So the meta has changed enough that it's been okay playing it. Now it's starting to get back into an aggro base again, so it's going to be harder to play. Okay. So you just kind of have to pick the right times to play your decks on the lot. Okay. So uh, last thoughts about the the deck. Uh, Versika, we'll start with you. Uh, you know, as, as far as mage decks go... Um, I like this because it. Well, I mean, as we as we see, it it, it punishes for, um, it punishes for misplays. Which, by the way, congrats on Golden Cabal Shadow Priest because I've been trying to get that card for three years now. <laughs> <laughs> that has one of the so, best animations from the classic set. I'm a little jealous at this moment. <laughs> We always um, are when he opens packs. But but yeah, I, I, I like I like it. I don't like it against decks that don't use weapons because like my version does have two weapon destructions and they're just two dead cards if you don't yeah. have that. Um, but there's so much Paladin and Warrior right now that you don't get punished for it often. Um, like Zeroshio said, Druid is a bad matchup. Uh, the mirror match comes down to draws, but I mean, other than that, this deck's got a pretty good chance of winning against anything else. Yeah, and it actually does pretty good against most priest decks uh, because they can't heal fast enough. Um, gone are the days of Reno style decks that just burst heal. Now, until priest starts putting in greater healing potion, that'll change things. But so far, that hasn't been teched in. Uh, yeah, we won't talk about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> so, Zerosho, anything you want to say last minute? No, I think I said it. Uh, I'm liking this deck. I I am working on my Golden Mage right now. I'm at 448 of 500, so this deck may take me the rest of the way. Sweet. Cool. All right. Well, guys, that's going to do it for us this week. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please email us at heropowerpodcast at gmail.com. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button below on YouTube and uh, give us a follow on Twitch to be alerted to when we go live. And uh, guys, until we see you again next week, good gaming. Bye, guys. <laughs>